Hey everyone, it's Kelly here with She Learns Video, and today we are back with another iPad Air video, but this time I'm going to be showing you how to edit video on the iPad Air using Adobe Rush. So if you haven't used Adobe Rush before, it's a wonderful entry-level editing software, and it's almost like a little brother to Premiere Pro. So it has a lot of different tools you can utilize, especially if you're making simple YouTube videos or small videos for your business, this will be the perfect tool for you to get started with. And if you have an iPad, you can quickly and easily edit your films on that tool. Inside this video, we will be looking at how to get your footage from a hard drive or your computer or camera over to your iPad. A few things we'll run over are how to adjust the length of your clips, how to color correct and do a quick color grade using Adobe Rush, and then how to do things like export, save, and store your files when you are working on the iPad Air. So Adobe Rush is a tool that's a little bit new to me as well. I initially started out editing over in iMovie when I began as a videographer, and then I moved into Premiere Pro. So Adobe Rush would have been a great bridge for me, or if I didn't want to start out with iMovie, I think Adobe Rush would have been a great starting point had it have been available when I was starting or more prominent. And at this point, I think if you are getting started with video and considering long-term investing in Premiere Pro, Adobe Rush is a great starting point. So we're gonna open it up and see how this tool works. We're gonna explore it together a little bit. And this will be perfect if you are a new videographer or a content creator of any kind. Okay, so here we are over in Adobe Rush. You can see I have the project open here on my Apple iPad Air, and we're just going to create a new project. And then from here, you're going to see all the different options to import and add footage to your video. And the options here are going to depend on how you're accessing your files. If you want to pull from an external hard drive, you can connect it here on the bottom. Um, with this USB-C connector and then pull it over to your hard drive and edit right off of that. If you wanted to access those, you would click in here to go to files and you would see the available external media here. So that is how you access an external hard drive. And then you can import from different files as well. Obviously this is accessing my cloud storage, so I have options here. Okay, and here we're going to access some files from a recent trip that I took to Hawaii with my family. So what you'll do is just select the files that you want to be included in your project. Okay, and so for this example, I've just selected a few of my files and then I've named it here down at the bottom and you're going to hit create. And then you're going to wait for it to prepare your media. So depending upon how many files you have, this may take a long time and it could also go really quickly if you don't have very many clips. Okay, so now it will prepare the media and depending upon how many files you have, this could go really quickly or it could be something that takes a bit longer if you've got a lot of you know, 4K video files and depending upon your connection to the internet as this is a app that's utilized on your iPad Air and I'm currently accessing files that are located on the cloud. Okay, so here you can see this is what it's going to look like once you are inside of Adobe Rush. You can see all your clips down here along with the audio files there below. And then over here on the side, you have a toolbar as well with a lot of variety and options. You have a tool that is going to help you when you're working with audio. Here, this will give you options for speeding things up or slowing them down. Okay, so here with color, you have options for built-in presets. So these are essentially just LUTs that have already been created and you can put them right on top of your footage. I love this for beginners, people who are new to video, as it gives you the ability to customize the look of your film without having to be a really, really knowledgeable individual when it comes to color grading and color science. This will make it quick and easy for you. Up here, you will see the effects panel and this will give you options for transitions, so you can utilize any of these different transitions as far as you know, fading in, fading out. Those are ones that I commonly use. And then here you can add graphics. So if you wanted to add a title, you could put a title right here at the beginning of your footage. You just drag and drop it onto your timeline. Super easy to use. They also have a variety of different overlays. You can access tons of different title options here to throw in you know, something simple like this is going to be quick and easy. You can adjust the fonts in here. You can go in here and adjust exactly what you want it to say. And once you have in here what you'd like it to say, you can go over to graphics, you can change the font, the style, the size, 
the spacing, all of this is quick and easy to do right here inside of Adobe Rush. Also, if you'd like to import any type of graphic, you could do that here utilizing this browse feature and put that right in with your film. Here inside the transform tool, you're going to have some options as far as how you're adjusting the look of your footage and the scale. So if you needed to zoom in for some reason, and then you maybe wanted to rotate things just a little bit to line up your horizon lines, you could do that there. That is for the most part what I would be utilizing this tool for. Or, you know, let's say for example, you wanted to crop out something in the background and zoom in on your footage. You could do that as well utilizing this tool here. Okay, so over here on the side, you'll see the little scissors. This is going to allow you to trim the clip. So if you'll just grab the little sidebars here, you can zoom in and out, and this will shorten or lengthen the clip that you have selected down here at the bottom. If you wanted to shorten things up so that it's a smaller clip on the full film, you could do that utilizing this tool. You could just go through clip by clip and adjust them as you see fit. This tool here is going to allow you to duplicate a clip. So let's click on this one here at the end and then hit duplicate and you'll see it show up again here in the timeline. So if for some reason you wanted to duplicate the clip, you could do that utilizing that tool. And then of course here, if you wanted to get rid of a clip, you would just hit the little trash can. All right, and next up in the toolbar, you'll see here this option is going to this is going to essentially split your video and audio file. So if you hit this here, you'll see your audio files show up here down below. And then if you want to put the clip back together for some reason, you can go back that way. A way that you could use this, for example, is with this clip here, obviously there's like some music at the pool playing in the background and there's lots of other people talking and you could just separate this out, separate the audio, and then you can delete it if you'd like. So you can see here, you can't hear the audio dial and it's black down here at the bottom. Another way to do this would just be to double click on the clip, hit separate audio. And then if you wanted to delete it, you could do that there. Okay, another tool you have here is it almost looks like a little index or guide and you hit that. And then this is going to show you the different essentially layers that you have in creating your film. If you wanted to move the title up over your clips, you could do that here. And then when I scroll, you'll see the Hawaii pops up as my little daughter is dancing there on the beach. So this gives you a lot of freedom. This is a tool that I utilize all the time in Premiere Pro when I am layering different audio, layering different video files. And I love how it's just really simple to drag and drop. Lastly, this tool down here at the bottom will give you the ability to select multiple clips. So if you needed to select a few clips because you wanted to move them around or delete them. This tool here is really simple and easy to do that. A few more toolbar options here up at the top on the left, you can see if you hit here, you can see all the assets and essentially the files that you're working with when you are creating your project here in Adobe Rush. So if you wanted to go back to one of those files or delete it, do any type of adjustment with the file, you could do that here. You can also add it to the timeline in this way or delete it if you don't want to have it included. Additionally, the plus sign, as always, is going to give you options to add in different media, graphics, voiceover, audio, and if you want to do any photos included with your video, you can import those as well. Another tool that's really handy if you're creating video projects that you're going to be utilizing on social media or you need a different aspect ratio, you need it to be adjusted. You can go down here to this little option and click that and it's gonna give you a variety of different looks. So if you need it to be in a square file, you can do it there and it will crop in. If you need it to be for a cell phone, it will obviously crop it in there. You do need to keep in mind that as you adjust these aspect ratios, certain parts of your film are going to be cut off that might have been visible when you were in the larger aspect ratio. But as with anything, you know, different films are going to need different settings and different looks. They're going to be utilized for different projects. So just keep this in mind, but I do love the ability to quickly and easily say, I need this to be suited for my cell phone or for social media post, And you can easily do that right here. Also, if you do have all of these timelines laid out here and you want to widen the look of it, you can use this little tool here to make this portion of the screen bigger and this portion of the screen smaller. And then if you wanted to see your footage better, you could also use it to come back down and widen out the actual image or video clip here at the top. Okay, so last but not least, once you are ready to share your film, you can go up here to share, and this is going to export it to your camera roll. If you wanted to airdrop it over to a location that you prefer, you could do that as well. Or again, if you're utilizing an external hard drive, you could export it and drop it over to that or save it over to there as well.
you're going to want to choose either this 1080 or 4K option. So if you shot the footage in 4K, for the most part, I would export there. If maybe some of it's in 4K and some of it's in 1080, then I would just go ahead and export at 1080 because that's going to give you the best quality and the best look. And this will also ensure that everything fits well into the frame of the film that you've created or the aspect ratio that you've created. I am at the moment unsure why 24 frames per second is not an option. So I will look into that and hopefully make a follow up if that does become an option. But right now I would say you can go ahead and export everything at this 1080 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second is what television is shot at and what I would recommend for viewing on social or playing back on your computer. 24 is always the preferred frame rate that I like, but I tend to shoot in 60 a lot on my phone just so I have those additional frames if I need them. So if you wanted to do that, you could export at match frame rate and this would export it here at 60. And then you would just hit export. Once you hit export and you have the file saved to your camera roll, you can drop it wherever you see fit. Or if you need to export it over to an external hard drive, you can do that as well. Again, I will say with the quality settings here and just as a rule with Adobe Rush is it's not going to have as many options as you have over in Premiere Pro. I do think this is a great tool for people who are creating videos for their social media. If you're a small business owner, if you are a photographer or videographer who's looking to really, really get serious about video editing, I would encourage you to eventually expand to a more robust program. But overall, I think this can be a really excellent tool for people who are new in the video space and just wanting to explore and create content for themselves, their business, or their brand. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, definitely drop them below in the comments. And if you need more information, go over to Sheila learnsvideo.com.